Welcome to a new episode of The Other Russian. So, today I'm going to talk to you about brand strategy out of all the topics. And yeah, who would have imagined taking this turn at some point in time, right? But yeah, I've um, spent some time recently recording that uh, video for, for Business Fanatic, for them publishing it on LinkedIn. And it took me like three or four attempts. And at some point I just gave up. I mean, no, actually it was like six. Anyway, doesn't matter. At some point I gave up and re realized that I'm just not going to be able to make it perfect because throughout those attempts, I've noticed that cliffhanger advertisement here right now. This is the long shot. So um what i was saying before i got interrupted by my imaginary advertisement so yeah that, that that's how it started i mean I, I thought it is impossible to nail it i did try several times and then variations appeared in some of them emerged and then I, I I thought that I won't be able to reproduce all those small pieces one by one and make it perfect because it's going to take me like ever, always, like months. And I, I just, you know, accepted the fact that it's not going to be perfect. And in a way, going against uh, some of the ideological pillars of our brand in a sense. I mean, it's just impossible. I mean, if we're, you know, our desire is to make it perfect. And then sometimes it's just not possible. But yeah, you just need to let it go. So today I wanted to dive deeper into brand strategy. And the reason being is that I thought it's an important topic. I also thought that the fact that the typically, at least in the post-Soviet um, space, as they call it, or ex-USSR uh, bloc or whatever you, you call it. So for that area, typically knowledge of marketing is like very limited because marketing as a discipline appeared in like beginning of 90s with the fall of the Soviet Union, right? But that's not the thing here. I mean, just realize that for the Western Hemisphere, uh, let's put it this way, marketing as a discipline has been thriving for decades by that point in time. And if you've seen some, um, by the way, patriarchal uh, TV show called uh, Mad Men, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's history, right? It's been there for decades. And then at some point in time, Soviet Union went kaput. And then countries were on the moon and rediscovering their selves, like their identities. I remember I went to the first grade and the uh, country collapsed. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's life now. <laughs> and then, yeah, 98 uh the the year when uh, my father lost job and uh, started drinking after that I remember it recently because it was his birthday the end of august but yeah then 2007 or 8 14 <laughs> and 22 apparently but yeah i mean the entire history of like russia is fucked up pretty much throughout the millennia but um yeah so what i was saying is that it was a new knowledge and how it started to kind of deepen the roots is that in a way to to happen through the big multinational companies like png and uh, others one of the earliest ones pepsi i think they've entered like before the soviet union went kaput uh, but yeah um, there are others, and of course, the the way that PNG introduced the, the knowledge 
as in in terms of understanding what marketing stands for how does it work how does it affect business how it brings more sales how it creates additional value to the business and the shareholders in the end and then they introduced the knowledge through people they hired and then giving them this like luggage of knowledge and making it the first experience of people in post soviet russia to understand what the fuck marketing is because before there was no market <laughs> and this is what is happening in a sense right now it's shrinking although depending on the category in some categories actually probably could potential for i don't know indian companies for instance and yeah i've uh, recently seen a recording by uh, skolkova and you know what i'm gonna put that down so skolkova yeah so this is a uh, business school it has nothing to do with the government structure it is uh 100 private sector so it's been there for a decade or something or maybe two decades i don't remember no i, I don't remember anyway probably put it in the notes or not but the thing about skolkova is that um they started to build new direction for businesses that got cut off from um, European countries and markets. And uh, interestingly enough, I uh, actually need to find this picture because it was done recently and it is a good illustration of what is happening in terms of uh, trade flows or how to what what's it called i don't, yeah let me let me find the file because i've just oh you uh, sent it via airplay and uh damn i need to open it so yeah while i'm waiting <laughs> uh anyway so markets are critical for understanding because fuck it's gonna be heavy i mean i'm gonna fucking kill you with this but yeah here it goes right so uh yeah i mean oh, what is this it's it's, it's a flow of uh a trade flow yeah basically so yeah let's try and enhance it so germany's exports to russia and central asia in billions of dollars last data point june 2023 so yeah pretty much june 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 23 23 right so this is central asia and russia so there's this or happening if you know right and there is some data here that uh, shows what changed you know in February 2022 so you can see what are the numbers here in terms of various countries and you can make a pause and you know make a picture later when you need it but that's not the point here so it was just a show off entrance but no it coincided not so the thing here is that everything is about market so for for some particular businesses or uh, i don't know services or whatever you can see that you know it works but yeah i'm talking about marketing so how marketing helps businesses understand how to get a shitload of money is through identifying where does their um, auditory or target audience sits in terms of like physical or actually nowadays metaphysical or what, what whatever the fuck is uh, i don't know the, the virtual reality we live in or matrix or i don't know how you call it nowadays but yeah out there so where are those that are going to uh, buy from you something regardless if it's b2b or b2c or b2g even i mean that depends of course because you know for for some working with b2g especially depending on what type of g it is uh those g's you know there's g20 g7 g whatever and you know anyway so understand where they are then understand uh what are you actually giving them and then understand why the fuck are you doing this or you know in try to summarize 
in a sentence or maybe paragraph like what exactly you're trying to achieve of course a lot of you answer make a lot of money for sure yeah i mean of course business is business this is pro profit world and uh, um, strong survive weak perish basically right but the thing here is that it's not only about that it is also something about the quality of life and uh, for people who are working for such enterprises it is uh, important to have either i don't know a vision or a, a purpose or a um, mission or something at least you know that would summarize why the fuck this group of people are doing the shit they're doing right and then aligning everything that business does around it is what brand strategy in a nutshell however there are other more nuanced ways to explain it to you and i'm gonna go through um the presentation that we have again it is way from perfect it is like a work in progress best case scenario but anyway um, this is a deck that we at Fnatic use to showcase the type of projects that we do as business and give you a bit of a flavor like why the fuck am i doing what i'm doing because it brings me joy it brings some pleasure in my life it brings meaning and if you remember before i think i mentioned at some point in the time that our business essence well not brand essence the business essence is uh put meaning behind business and this is the thing that we're doing right helping people to either have a sense of that connection or divide it in a sense like between the entities you and that um, entity the virtual one or however you can call it like mental construct a brand and then just knowing that this gives people some guidance in in many difficult situations and again there are companies that are still <laughs> surprise surprise work in russia big multinationals local ones and uh, government owned uh, roughly 80 percent of the entire economy sector and then there is like the small portion that is left out that is not yet government controlled and yeah so not much right but they still they struggle and imagine you're living again i mean go way back and have you read or not that book by george orwell 1984 is it mentioned in some of my early podcasts for years <laughs> but it gives you an idea it gives you a feeling of what it is to live in russia and this is exactly the reality you live in so then take this perception take this like uh damn lens yeah and I don't know why the fuck am I going in here with this. Let's just dive, deep dive, you know. I've lost, I've lost. <laughs> I've lost my track. And it's going to take time to reconfigure and get back to this because it is an important topic. And I want to put that here as a separate thought. Why the fuck do I call it? Right. So let's deep dive into this one. So this is an executive summary this is uh something that gives you an understanding of what was done throughout that project and i'm i needed to make a confession here i was not 
half an attic when this happened. Because I was working at a different company, I uh, mentioned before in one of my early podcasts, but but episodes. Yeah, so I'm trying to. I'm actually I think I've uh, crossed that line when people typically surrender. So I read it somewhere that it was like ten or eleven podcasts, or and that's it. I was like, okay, I need to make at least build beyond that. So what is this one? Yeah, sixteen. Oh man, all right. So let's do it. So um, probably you've read something already there, or maybe you've stopped and paused at some point in time to understand what the fuck I uh, was mentioned there. But yeah, this is the, the was done in a nutshell. So I'm going to try and deep dive into some of the details, but uh, maybe be drowsy here in terms of uh, knowing all the nuances and aspects is that I wasn't there yet, right? So... Nevertheless, it uh, yeah, it's gonna be. A, I, I thought I should have put it in the beginning, but then it wasn't the end. I was like, oh okay, <laughs> now I need to scroll the way up. So this is a project that was done for uh, within a duration of a time frame between June 2016 and January 2019 for a privately owned uh, com- insurance company called Renaissance Insurance. And this is the identity that's uh, been there ever since um, the rebranding that was based on that strategy that we've created as business. So the owner of the company is uh, Boris Jordan. He is one of the biggest investors in hemp. You can Google fact check me here, if you will, but yeah. And um, major holder of some companies. Anyways, so we've been invited to the pro- to the project to uh, just bring some re- research to the board to highlight um, the upcoming trends and the tectonic shifts that are about to shape the industry and uh, disrupt it entirely. But they're not yet happening. However, there are certain signals that the threat is coming from different markets not insurance market because once you compare yourself against yourself and against uh, market competitors or segment competitors you see a certain uh, part of vision so it's not like full picture so unless you understand what are other potential threats and you can start with absolutely basic uh, methods like SWOT analysis just to sit there and understand but it's not going to give you that level of uh, deep understanding in terms of uh, figuring out which specific like categories or industries going to disrupt you and change uh, the rules of the game pretty much because yeah it's a different methodology so i'm not going to go into details here in terms of the methodology because i wasn't there as that but yeah so some of the key points uh, that's been in in the beginning so the market of insurance companies at that point in time wasn't strongly differentiated so all the companies looked in a sense alike they were just products servicing uh, specific needs of customers uh, providing them uh, some basic terms of that agreement basically either insurance coverage or something else so yeah i mean there are categories not only insurance that are well at least we're talking about russian market in other countries the situation could be like completely different but since it's a tectonic shift in some countries it already happened and some not so yeah price uh, wars are there so everybody's trying to pay uh, to fight for each cent and then the demand for the key products is shrinking so it's going down so the main driver of business is stagnating and if nothing is happening so if nothing is happening and you're not growing basically unless you start to innovate or do something about uh, your business definitely not go in directly and cut fucking fat or how they call it just trim the fat but just don't do it just think first understand what is happening and then make the decision because yeah i mean recently been seeing some interesting um yeah whatever 
So yeah, existing uh, marketing tools are no longer uh, working or, you know, uh, nothing's happening pretty much. So the situation is not changing. And uh, yeah, so again, we came, we brought them some uh, interesting observations. And then they thought that, yeah, it seems that we need to do something about it. So the changes that we brought were around identifying uh, things like, yeah, so basically at that point in time, banks started to also provide uh, insurance policies and uh, give insurance. And then it, the barriers for entering the market pretty much lowered down. So, yeah, I mean, others are coming in. And if you're not going to do anything about it, you're going to eventually die because uh, business and strategy is about long-term thinking, is about it trying to figure out what the fuck business industry going to look like in at least five years from now. And then longer periods, of course, like, you know, some Japanese companies or Chinese companies, they have their like mentality of long-term thinking. So yeah, what, because the, I think that's why um, the, one of the reasons is the, one of the most popular book on strategy is by Sun Tzu, The Art of War. Definitely recommend reading, but that's not the point here. Uh, yeah, so research was done and then they've seen that, yeah, I mean, we're about to be fucked up and they decided to deep dive, uh, to deep, take a deep dive into research. So yeah, digital research has been provided. So we interviewed the top managers, 24 interviews in total, including CEO and board members and whomever series of 12 folks groups that was down there and uh yeah that back in the day was uh physical face to face so identification of factors of, of, of effective in the insurance industry yeah that's exactly what i mentioned to you before this is where it was identified well actually before there were like first signals and then once we um went in we've seen that yeah the, per the situation is about to, the, the shit is about to hit the fan as they say so yeah, then further uh, research has been conducted over the duration of the next, I don't know how many, how many months, so June 2016, yeah, so it took them some time to think, of course, like five months, but yeah, um, so then once the research has been done and conducted, we got together and, uh, and brainstormed well, not only brainstorm. We first mapped out the existing territories, the emotion territories on which existing brands were uh, playing. So, yeah, not only them, uh, other angles as well. But then we came together and brainstormed around the hypothesis, like high-level hypothesis, very like abstract in a sense. So, yeah, probably Guggenheim first draft would be a perfect representation here of a first draft so then those hypotheses were brought to workshop together with client and then what happened is that they worked together and tried to kind of uh, put on those hypotheses and then understand like whether or not it fits in terms of business, in terms of strategy, in terms of uh, corporate culture, in terms of HR policies, in terms of the product, in terms of everything that they do, uh, like communication, of course, as well, an external one, it, whether or not it is in line. So there were several like shortlisted uh, hypotheses that we brought and uh, we've uh, worked through together. And then once it was identified, and this is a pretty standard approach in terms of uh, building brand strategy and uh, I've uh, recently ran several uh, meetings with the potential clients and then you know talking through all the way the way that we approach I mean everybody's doing the same right so that's the thing I said I mean it's exactly the same as it, it, they do it so the approach is there the devil is in the details however so yeah going down to that workshop so there um what we did is uh selected the direction which was then used to build a brand strategy and uh, then it was uh of course done properly with the help of uh, like really good copywriters because there's a um a nuanced phrase that probably I'm not going to be able to reproduce in English because I do remember 
well i think there is one yeah but um anyway let's get let's cross that bridge when we get to it so the the selected hypothesis was then presented by buddy c Orden. that's uh, him uh, the hemp guy presenting and it, it is simple and we're there you know with them helping them guiding them you know that's uh actually that's yegor if yeah that that's him i mean you can recognize him so uh yeah, I mentioned him to you earlier, the one that got a letter from Ray Bradbury. It's in one of my previous episodes. So yeah, um, so the approach that was taken here was more of a visionary in a sense. Well, not visionary per se, it's more about like finding this uh, purpose, pretty much. Or, yeah, I think that that's it. Yeah, pretty much. The idea, the, the structure, and I, if you go into that video that I mentioned to you before about marketing, marketing um, um, the brand platform thing that I mentioned to you before, if you go there, if you go through the details and you understand that um, I mentioned about the thing about forms, like various forms, triangles, keyholes, uh, onions, whatever, pyramids. And one of those aspects is sometimes critical to deliver the message, convey it. So if you go to this particular presentation and uh, through the structure of it and go back to that slide that I missed before, the structure was... Um, well, what's the word for it when you got inspired by so when you read and then that some piece of knowledge inspires you so he got inspired by simon simon cynic start with why and uh yeah that was put at the core of it the why the answer to that question so that was the mission it still is to make the world a safer place and i'm gonna say to you in Russian. Сделать мир безопасным местом. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> coming from a mouth of Russian, right? Those words. Tough challenge for, for brand. But yeah, you can go there. You can check it out. They build a website uh, showcasing it to you, what it looks like and what it means exactly. But yeah, this is the, the explanation taken from uh, their website pretty much this is a launch so once um, the brand strategy so yeah, this is the brand strategy all right and um, once it was built in place so it's just one document one piece of uh, I don't know uh, slide one slide one page so this is the brand strategy and some of you may sit there and think like what I completely understand. That's why I'm doing this recording today. That's why I'm talking about those things in the first place. So why it matters is that for business, once it's done, it aligns everything. So from that on, they've aligned their HR brand around this brand essence. Well, mission actually in that particular um, form. But yeah, typically look at those missions, the ones that the people put on their websites of their companies. And I've seen a lot of them. And, you know, you can just replace a logo. You can put a mission statement, like do a shuffling game, you know. And then put them together like a slot machine. And then it's going to be the same. You know. They fit. <laughs> All of them. So that that's the point. They uh, they're faces in many cases, not in all, of course. But yeah, so HR brand was developed, and then an internal movie was um, launched on a, a through a corporate portal. And one thing that happened that overnight, so people came to an entirely new office. But yeah, the entire approach was uh, as well inspired by Cotter's theory eight uh, steps leading to change so this was uh, taken at the core 
but yeah, I mean, there is some Russian language there, but yeah, it's sad. You know, um, it's not perfect. That's why it's not yet fully translated. But yeah, the idea here is that in there's been a launch of an internal portal, uh, prevent Renin's, and you could have went there and uh, you know apply for the transformators or the change agents um, role or position or brand ambassador. Uh, they how they call them at some point in time, and then you know get on board, you know help with resources and everything and contribute in terms of uh, coming up with ideas for being preventive so then it was a cascading stage you know delivery of that project i'm just looking at time and yeah i'm talking for a lot i'm just not going to go into details here because details don't matter that much so you you can stop at some point in time and have a look but yeah so once the ideology was taken in place in terms of yeah and driving ideologies is a slogan for a fanatic pretty much but yeah so meetings workshops entire like integration internally and then once everything was again aligned it was helpful to build new products that brought new technology to the market uh telemeter system so i've um, recently had a meeting well recently a month ago with uh, people at Cube Global, and we've been talking about uh, this project in particular. I've been talking to them about it, and then they said that I was in charge of uh, bringing this technology to the market. I was like, "Shit, I'm, I'm amazed," because in Russian market the technology was never there. So telematics is telematics, or yeah, I'm not sure if I pronounced correctly here, but anyway. So what, what it is as technology, it is a um, device that is, or not the device, well, it depends, I mean, the source of, anyway, the signal. So it gathers data of uh, movement, and uh, once it is implemented with cars, and it is then taken into account, you can use this data to calculate the risk um scenario like level of a specific person and then change the price depending on how she or he or he or she or they or them don't know um damn was it a patriarchal shit there that i did just now yeah anyway apologies for that so anyway mm, talking about that so they've concentrated on building product that would not only gather that data but bring back knowledge to the client and help them in terms of lowering the cost for their insurance so yeah and then there were other integrations with the uh, magnet is the, the biggest or second biggest nowadays uh, fmcg retailer in russia at some point that was um, like 100 percent uh, private owned but then yeah unfortunately things changed so yeah people came to entirely new office so there, there were posters of uh, people who invented like great innovations in terms of safety so everything is again aligned around the idea of making a world a safer space place damn anyway so the person who invented those block walls in the ship so that if there is a hole and the water starts to pour in the other segments are not um, touched or affected it's probably the word i'm looking for here and other people who implemented and invented new types or mass populated among masses like steve jobs with the magnet connector prior to apple introducing it to the world it was widely known in japan in for like electronics for rice cookers and there's been this magnetic connector that saved from um, accidents with children and rice um, cookers so yeah like steve jobs uh, decided it's a good idea and indeed i mean great guy I admire him a lot but yeah genius marketeer so light refract reflection surface uh, max for doctors and just to remind you this is prior to covid uh, 19. 
which effectively started in, uh, well, the lockdown mainly in February, March 2020. So it did, um, you know, companies sometimes in the end of the year, well, in Russia at least, they make those like gifts, like holiday celebrations for their business partners and they send out various stuff. So uh, they've sent out uh, gifts for 1020 and among those gifts were uh, surgical masks. So this is pr thinking preemptively. And um, yeah, so the rooms were renamed after specific people. So prior to that, it was some uh, names, something that, um, you know, meaningless in a sense, but not aligned around one idea. So new change implemented. So those were like inventors, like big inventors of safety belt and uh, inventor of uh, pasteurization, Louis Pasteur, or pasteurization. Anyway, I'm not French or Russian, what the fuck you want from me? Andy Hopkins, antivirus inventor. <laughs> yeah, John P. Knight, traffic light inventor. Leonardo da Vinci, inventor of love boy. Heinz Leder, liber, ah, liberal, stelle. inventor of ABS. Um, Edward Heinz, inventor of traffic separation lines. Henry Mar Parmeli, Parmeli, Inventor of automatic fire sprinkler. So, yeah, I mean, look at those, right? Um, what was that? So, people had to build new neurological pathways. And actually, oh, talking about pathways, so I finished that book, uh, you know, finally, uh, The Emperor Words No Clothes. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to dedicate a separate podcast. I'm writing it down. Emperor podcast, right? So, um, I've started to read another book about microdosing. Um, it's insane. I mean, I love it already. It's very thin, small, uh, but yeah, it's really good in terms of bringing additional knowledge, uh, especially about building new roots and helping with migraine um, confirmed help, like one time or several time dosage with, like no side effects <laughs> and confirmed out there you can use chat gpt to find any research nowadays available and just look there actually you know i'm gonna make an episode on it um, ai because i've been like lately like last two days i couldn't sleep yesterday i, th I think i'm a late bloomer <laughs> but yeah you have had like hundreds of ideas running through my mind what to do and i started the day with just uh prompts and yeah Ooh, went far but definitely worth investing time in terms of uh, using it for various reasons so go there um benjamin franklin uh, inventor of uh dear, shit i forgot what's it called it's uh, lightning Fuck. Anyway, uh, so triptych was represented in representing the idea in importance of it in each and every room. So prior to 18th century, most popular uh, association with the word uh, lightning was fire inside the building. So yeah, Benjamin Franklin, uh, the one that you can see on a hundred dollar bill. Um, Notice that, yeah, there's a uh, commonality between atmospheric nature, yeah, the, yeah, the nature of atmospheric and static electricity. That's why in 1752, he advised a construction of uh, Molniatvod, uh, lightning, whatever, Gramatvod, uh, <laughs> as if that helped, right? which caught lightning and uh, safely directed it to the ground. S uh, preempting uh, direct, preempting again, right? So preempting again against direct contact uh, of lightning, uh, nothing's more effective or more money saving ever been introduced ever since. So put in the right spot, it just 
simply works. Right, oh shit. Other triptychs like Louis Pasteur saw a rotten apple and then looked at the um, under a microscope like what the fuck is happening and then boiled the fuck out of it and was like, oh, no germs, perfect. So yeah, and savior of uh, children's lives. Inventor of childproof bottle, what happened? Children before ate pills. Mm, no longer able to because it's closed and not easy to open and then you know they die of age ideally but yeah this is shit it's been a while so yeah that's that's the exact summary i think it's like not chekhov but yeah no it's something about different chekhov is about the gun the gun so i'm not gonna throw ganyasha at you don't worry but that was a, a bit of an overview of the brand strategy podcast. I'm going to continue doing it. So it, I hope that at some point in time, somebody appears and decides to like, share, and fucking spread the news about that other Russian guy, right? So thank you for watching. And yeah, be whomever you want to be as usual, you know. Cheers.